Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me at Manhart, surrounded by some incredible cars that we're going to be checking out, but in particular this, the Manhart MHX3 600. This is Manhart's newest introduction based on the new BMW X3 M competition and I'm going to be showing you around this car, talking about the modifications, taking it out for a drive as well, hopefully if the weather allows, finding some open stretches of the auto barn but we're going to find out if this is the ultimate BMW X3 M. Let's do it then, let's have a quick look around, go through the details and modifications to this and then take it out for a drive to see what it's like. Let's start with a quick look here around the showroom. We've got some of the newer cars, and of course, I'm gonna be taking a particular focus to the MHX3 600, the car I'm gonna be driving shortly, but also, I want to show you the likes of some of the projects. The two BMW 1Ms here, also the engine that is in that M4. It is not the six cylinder that you think it is. But to start over on this side then, we will go through the X3 M competition in detail. Alongside it, we have the new MH8 600 from Manhart, based on the new 8 series and in particular the M850i coupe taking power up from 530 to 600 horsepower along with a host of other modifications. Coming behind on the right we have the MH5 800. Now on a previous visit here I drove the MH5 700 based on the new M5. The 800 is based on the M5 competition. It features many of the same exterior modifications but also adds the new carbon fiber bonnet which looks incredible and well packs 800 horsepower horsepower. Alongside it, we have the MHZ4 440, based on the new Z4 M40i, and I imagine that, with 400 horsepower, 440 horsepower even, is quite an incredible thing to drive. Behind, we have some cars we've seen here when visiting before, the two Porsche 964s, next to them, the 993 Turbo, we've got a 991.1 generation GT3 RS. Manhart are also working on Mercedes AMG products, so this is a GLC 63 from AMG, except this is the GLR. 700 from Manhart. Yep, they've taken it from 510 horsepower up to 700 thanks to some new turbos as well as some new looks to the exterior as well. Then this M4. Now normally the M4 has the straight six, six cylinder inline engine. This M4 has something different. I've released the catch already. Have a look at this. That is the 4.4 turbo V8 from the M6. Yeah, that's potential for 700 horsepower. It's a project currently in development. That is crazy to stick a massive V8 lump in the M4. I love it, and that's what Manhart were very often famed for, and the fact that they're still doing it is super, super cool. Of course, the new bonnet as well to house the larger engine. From the outside, though, not necessarily so obvious, but how cool is that? Then next to it, we have the MH2 550, based on the BMW M2. I drove this thing, and it was absolutely larry. 550 horsepower, short wheelbase, this thing pure crazy, and then we have the MH1 500s based on the BMW 1Ms, a car that I think has come, become quite famed as, as a bit of a, a classic of the more modern times now in the fact that it's a manual gearbox. It's a lot of fun to drive and this car looks awesome. But we are here today mostly to take a look at this. So let's check it out then, the MHX3 600. Checking this out then, and it's currently wearing the Manhart decal set. Now think about this car. If you took away the launch decals, the gold stripes that you can see around the car, it would be a complete sleeper. This thing would not stand out at all, but as the name suggests, it has over 600 horsepower. Now the X3M comes now as both the X3M and the X3M competition, BMW doing these two different variants, but it has the new S58 engine. This is the engine that we're likely gonna find in the future, M3, and M3 competition, M4 and M4 competition, and different models that they're going to be making. Now in standard trim, the three liter inline six twin scroll turbo would be making a total of 510 horsepower and 600 newton meters. Now I'm actually just gonna pop, pop round and get this opened up so we can have a quick look at the engine while we're doing this. Double pull on the tab down here. But this car takes it up from 510 horsepower to 630 thanks to the MH Tronic, and it takes torque up from 600 newton meters up to 
785. Yep, 120 horsepower up at 185 newton meters of torque up as well. Those are some big, big numbers, big gains thanks to the MH Tronic. Now, visually, not too much has changed beyond the decals. Of course, it's wearing the Manhart Concave 1 21 inch wheels, also with the gold pinstripe around them, and it's sitting on some HR lowering springs to lower it by about 30 millimeters as well. So it's quite, I think, subtle in its appearance and design, but that's a little bit what the X3 is actually about. It's not trying to be the most shouty of cars, and he says, let's close that down properly. It has a new exhaust system from Manhart, stainless steel system at the back, TUV certified, so not necessarily the loudest, craziest thing in the world, but no doubt it will sound pretty good as a result. And it's finished with four uh, 10, uh, 10 centimeter, 100 millimeter exhaust tailpipes, traditional BMW M style. Now, like I said, I've not actually previously driven the X3 M competition, the new latest generation of the car, but the X3 has been an immensely popular and successful model since it was introduced. The slightly smaller SUV, of course, now they have the X1s and X2s and the lines have all become a little bit crazy and confusing but SUVs are very popular for a reason they're getting more dynamic and more capable and I'm interested to see with the springs as well how the ride on this actually is too but this well it's probably going to be quite a popular product and today we're going to find out all about it so let's get the X3M competition started up then we'll take it outside go out for a drive and discover everything about this and then later on check out more of the interior too it's startup time then so let's take a listen that's not too bad, a nice raspy burble out of the car, so we'll pull it outside, get it all ready and set, hop on board, to take this out on the roads. Here we are then, cruising along. So at the moment I've got everything in complete automatic normal, that means the powertrain is inefficient, the suspension is in comfort and the steering is also in comfort. You have a lot of things that you can change, settings that you can configure. Of course we've got the 8-speed ZF automatic gearbox, that is also an automatic. And basically when you drive it like this, generally speaking, it's pretty quiet, calm, easy gentle cruiser maybe you feel that it is on lowering springs it is a little bit firmer than you would expect the car like this to be being the m version of course having gone through m gmbh that's the intention of injecting a spice of life some sportiness into the car versus the standard x3 you know most of the x3 models are diesels our smaller petrol engines our practical family cars usable daily drivers this though is the daily driver with a twist a particular manhart twist where it comes into so much more life now, like the M5 introduced, you have the red M1 and M2 buttons on the steering wheel. So if I just press M1, it's pre-defaulted uh, in the way it's set up, and we've got sport, sport, sport on the different settings. You can instantly hear there is a lot more noise coming out of the exhaust. You do have the, the kind of speaker sound as well. It's a BMW that's become pretty normal now. The gearbox holds the gears a little bit longer. And even on the gearbox, you have those three different settings where you can adjust uh, how independently, how quickly the gearbox actually shifts. Of course, we we can then use the paddles, drop some gears to slow it down for a moment. Hear a little bit more of the six cylinder engine. This is really becoming the thing. The S58 is a development from other BMW engines. Oh, I tell you what, that's quick. That has more than enough pull up and kind of get up and go, that's for sure. But as I was just gonna say, it's, it's a development from the engines. A three litre twin scroll turbo inline six is almost the default in a sporty BMW. Maybe not in that M4 that we saw earlier, but a gear, uh, an engine and an eight speed automatic gearbox configuration that's becoming very, very normal for good reason. It works incredibly well. It, I think, satisfies the vast majority of buyers. And in this so far, there's a little bit more noise, perhaps not the amount of noise I expected, I mean, it's the TUV certified exhaust, which here in Germany is a challenge in its own right in terms of legislation and what you can actually do. It's not an export system, which would be immensely louder and would probably be a little bit deafening. And of course, cars are generally improving in terms of sound deadening, in terms of the glass, in terms of the materials, which just make them a little bit quieter inside. That's the way everything's going, regulations and rules and so forth. Then if we press M2, which will ask us for a second confirmation because it lowers the traction, we then get M dynamic mode with four wheel drive sport. And while it's a permanent four wheel drive system, you can't just make this rear wheel drive or something. It changes the balance, it changes the traction control, it changes the setup and the general configuration the way the computers are all working, puts everything into Sport Plus mode. I've got a few graphics uh, just showing me how it's all set up now. And basically, it probably it's a little bit more crackly as well, but we'll experience more of that when we get away from the traffic. Yeah, I can 
here and we get out onto the autobahn where we will get some more of that sound and be able to see what it's really capable of. So cruising along here, I mean it does daily driver duties pretty well, there's a lot of space back there, a lot of luggage space in the boots and plenty of room uh, on the back seats as well, nice digital screen, displays and screens, the central touch screen, also the digital dashboard and we've got gesture control where you can wave around at it and do all sorts of things and mute it and just control it. And behave with it however you would like. Anywho, I'm going to try and find a road where we are not following a truck and hopefully where we have some de-restricted stretches out uh, to really put the foot down. So let's go do it. Let's go find an autobahn. Around onto some autobahns we go then and I tell you what, in the middle settings or M1 as it's configured on here with everything generally in sport, I much prefer the drive of the car. Overall it really kind of fits it I think a little bit better and you start to get a sense of some of its dynamic ability. Maybe I should not pull out straight onto that person but we will see if we can find some unrestricted stretches. Actually, we're in one right now. Okay, okay. That was up to 170 kilometers per hour pretty easily. I'm not gonna lie, of course I'm in manual with the paddles. Small little paddles on the back of the steering wheel are not actually the easiest to reach either. They're quite far around the back. But hopefully we're gonna get an opportunity to really see what this car is all about. Kick down, drop it down to fourth gear. Anyway, so alas, not at this stage. Hopefully, we won't have any traffic, but we'll get out the other side and have some more fun. My favorite de restricted signs. Okay, drop down the gears to third gear. We're at 80 kilometers an hour. Foot down then, and away we go. Nearly 800 newton meters of torque propelling us forward. And this is where it starts to feel quite significantly quicker. That's just shy of 200 kilometers per hour. Up a little bit of a hill as well, effortlessly, with some decent sound while it was at it. Back out of the roadworks we go then. Drop down the gears again. I do think it could definitely get away with being noisier. You feel a lot of the power up towards the top end when the turbo kicks in and it really, really gives you some extra propulsion and pushes you forward. I'd like to get an open stretch to get above 200 kilometers an hour to experience it more up towards that end. But it's very comfortable and composed at decent speed and under heavy acceleration. So it's not too much power for the chassis or the setup, we can say. And this all comes via the MHtronic type setup. And it'd be nice if the person in front would move over just one lane, which is currently sitting empty, because unfortunately it looks like that's not gonna happen this time around. There we go, there we go. Kick down, and away we go then. Yeah, it pulls really quite hard, 220 or so there. Of course, the standard car limited to 250 kilometers per hour. relatively quietly, relatively calmly, and in a car that 
like I said earlier, feels quite composed in this kind of environment. So I can see where it's coming from, I can see how it makes sense. One car in the garage, you want to be able to go for a, a decent high speed run, then it's going to do that pretty well. For the time being, we are going to head back towards Manhart, so I want to show you a few more things about the interior of the car as well before we say farewell. Now that I'm back at base, let me show you a little bit more around the inside of this and some of the unique things about the X3M competition. But before we do that, let's take a little listen to it. So let's pop it into M2. You can also see a head-up display here, which gives you that uh, almost horizontal at the top rev counter. Just go back out of it, you can see the normal display. So M2, the second press, just to confirm because you're lowering traction. Let me open the door so we can take a little listen. It's just letting me know that we're currently in neutral, which is totally fine by me, because it means we can get some of this sound out of it. So take a little listen. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not crazy, crazy loud. And that is unfortunately the direction these things are heading at the moment. It's just not possible to make so much sound in a TUV approved exhaust system. Anyway, I'm just gonna close the door, it's a bit chilly. Actually, that's quite a nice touch. The X that you have there, of course the X lineup from BMW ever expanding. And I got an opportunity to experience the new X3 uh, when it launched, the diesel models of the car originally, the X3 uh, 30D, for example, and 20D when they came out. But the M competition models is following in BMW's more recent, I guess, style. They started with the M5 and then the M5 competition, but now we're basically getting the M and the competition models at the same time, two different uh, versions the competition being the ultimate, a bit like how with Mercedes you have the S model, so the A45, the A45S, the E63, E63S, for example. Um, down here, just to show you a little bit, cup holders, wireless charging pad, you can close that back up. And then up top, you've got the touchscreen infotainment, and this is great. It has loads and loads and loads of... Oh, I'm just going to... Uh, Need to get out of that oh, M dynamic mode. Um, loads and loads and loads of things that you can configure and control. And, you know, go home. You've got your tiles. All acts very efficiently, quickly, and easily. And you can just jump through and my car go into different things. You can load up various screens and things. Obviously, we're currently in German, which doesn't help me hugely. But you can go into M setup, configure M1 and M2 driving modes, DSC, the MX drive, um, motor, suspension, steering. You've got a lot of different things you can change actually inside there which is really quite nice and this is very quick and efficient mx drive four wheel drive four wheel drive sport i'm actually really quite impressed by how smooth this system is then you have the gesture control so volume for example you just do that and it would raise your music turn it back down you can swipe away phone calls answer phone calls you can do all sorts of different things just waving your hand around you've got these uh, touch toggles to go to hotkeys which just move at the top of the screen as you slide your finger around um climate control with the screens inside always been a fan of that unique touches then the red start stop button up here having the red m1 m2 buttons mounted on the steering wheel just sportier touches right red is always associated that way inside we've got all the carbon fiber inlays and trim the dual tone as well with the contrast stitching it's all very nice from an interior perspective it's smart it's clean it's tiny look at the seats you can see a bit more of the perforation in the back the way the dual tones work the illuminated m badges at the bottom of the headrests is again just a nice detail um, in the center this is where you can configure your different driving modes so you can go Go and set up directly take you straight to that screen if you want or you can just jump through the different modes and you can see this in the center of the display efficient sport sport plus you can change the suspension the steering go through these different modes um, to configure it all and then on the top of the gear shifter you have the settings to change the three different gear shift modes as well and then p just so you know is down there at the very bottom in front of the electric handbrake a few other things your cameras for example reversing camera um, parking sensors there is the button here for the exhaust um, do you want to just directly control the valves? Makes a small difference to the sound it's making. And then in front of us, we do have the nice digital display. And I've always been a fan of how BMW integrated a bit of an analog appearance with those silver trims that go around the speedo and the rev counter, just to keep it slightly uh, more traditional in that respect. For the moment though, I'm gonna press the button, shut it off, go into silence. And I'll quickly show you inside the rear uh, and the luggage space of the car, just to show you the practicality elements of the X3. Back here, oh, we've got the display plates currently down there at the moment, but ample space um, for the legroom. Nothing to complain about there. That's in my driving position. Loads and loads of room overall. You've got your central um, armrest. So you can see cup holders in there. This all folds down, of course, as you would expect. If we come around to the back as well, just to open this up. 
MHX3 600 powerful tailgate back here. You can see the 40 20 40 roll rear folding seat split, the parcel shelf cover, and then you've also got a little bit of additional storage available underneath the boot floor, along with the rails to attach and strap things down. So, overall, good things to say about the car, I suppose. It's very practical, works well does the job as you would hope it would in the Manhart package just adds a little bit more of a kick into it a little bit more performance a little bit more power and certainly it makes for a very very quick moving small form SUV so thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video today thank you to Manhart of course for the opportunity to come and take the car for a drive but that is it for this time I will see you again very very soon cheers